Hey, wanna go to the park? <laughs> you know what day it is today? It's Saturday. And I gotta take these guys to the park. But before I do that, I wanna talk about batteries. One of the most frequently asked questions is, how do you charge batteries? How can I charge my batteries? So, today I figure I take small time out of my day to attempt to explain how does charging occur and how you can charge your batteries. Let's do that. All right, batteries, you know them. They look like this. This is an old battery that we made at Jack 35, 12 volts, used to power cameras, pretty much anything that's 12 volts. Here's a bigger one. Uh, here are some that you might recognize. These are LiPo batteries for RC. So those batteries are made out of cells. These ones have three of these. These are individual cells. If you've been watching any of my videos, you know that I've been messing around with these kinds of cells. This is an 18650. It's a lithium ion battery, 4.2 volt fully charged, 3.7 nominal, and around three volts is completely dead. These ones have pretty similar voltages. The only difference is that these are called LiPo because of the polymer casing that they are. These are pouch cells. These are cylindrical 18650s, but they come in all different sizes and shapes. How do you charge them? That is one question that keeps popping up. Okay. Here's the easiest way to charge them. You see, have you ever seen one of these? These are power supplies. This converts 110 volts into something smaller, usually DC. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Here's another one. This one can do more power. This is two amps, this is one amp. Same specs, 12.6 volts. You could also use some of these guys. These are available all over the place, especially on eBay. These are adjustable power supplies and they come in all kinds of different sizes. They have this little pot in here that you can adjust and you can, and you have some kind of control of what the input voltage is or what the output voltage is. This is a little one, probably does about 50 watts. And there's a bigger one that does 100 watts. Now here's one for 150, another for 150. This is probably like 300 watts and they get to be really big. So these can be used to charge a battery cell. How? Well, let me show you how. So let's take this little guy and let's take one of these cells. You set this, this power supply, you set it to 4.2 volts output. You connect the negative to the negative, the positive to the positive, and then the other positive is your input. And that's gonna be something bigger, something like 12 volts or whatever. Um, which then you can use one of these, right? So this one will be supplying 12 volts to this power regulator here. This power, this device is gonna regulate down to 4.2 volts. If this battery is fully depleted, then energy is gonna flow from this guy in here at whatever maximum rate this can do. If this can do one amp, then at the rate of one amp, it's going to flow into this battery. This cell should be about two amp hours. So in about two hours, there's gonna be enough energy flowed in there to be able to raise the voltage from wherever it started at up to 4.2 volts. Now what's gonna happen after that? If this is supplying 4.2, two volts and this battery is already fully charged at 4.2 volts, what's gonna happen? Do you need to actually disconnect this from here? The answer is no. Why? Because this battery will not be able to take any more energy in because it's already matching the energy that this little device can put in there. So you can leave this connected there permanently and this battery will not go up higher voltage than this power circuit can supply. Now, you could, if you raise the pot here into a higher voltage, then there's gonna be a differential, there's gonna be energy flow, and then potentially overcharging the cell, which is where the dangers come. It's the same thing with this kind of cell. You could do that with this one because this one has similar voltage characteristics. This one will charge up to 4.2 volts safely. Now, how do you do multiple cells? Well, you can do multiple cells in different ways. 
you can connect them in parallel and this device will charge both of them. Essentially, we'll treat them as one cell. You can keep going and you can keep going and you can keep going. A different way to charge multiple cells is of course to connect them in series. Now by connecting these batteries in series, now the voltage changes. Now it's not 4.2 volts that they require. It's 4.2 volts times two, which is 7.4. So you would have to raise the output voltage of your power supply to 4.2 volts in order to be able to charge them. If you wanna add a third battery, then that would add an extra 4.2 volts, making it 12.6 volts. Remember 12.6 volts? Remember these guys, 12.6 volts? There's a reason why these are 12.6 volts. These are designed to charge a 12 volt lithium ion battery. Essentially, you wouldn't need this. This is already in here and it converts power from the wall, from the grid, 110 volts AC down to rectified DC 12.6 volts. And you can put the positive into the positive, the negative into the negative, it will charge those cells. That is exactly how we charge our old batteries that we used to make. These Jag batteries have essentially three cells, three of these cells inside, in series. And so when you connect this guy in here, then that's how it charges it. Okay, so that's fine in charging little flashlight batteries and camera batteries, right? But how do you charge like a power wall or your car? You know, that doesn't work the same way, does it? Well, it actually, it does. Um, these things, these power supplies get bigger and bigger. The one that I use to charge the Samba, it's a 5,000 watt power supply. It charges the battery basically the same way. It does have an algorithm that makes the batteries, that allows you to charge batteries in the quickest way possible. What it does is for the first part of the charging curve, it just pushes the maximum power. So it'll push 5,000 watts into the battery and it'll adjust the voltage to match the one of the battery. So as the voltage rises on my battery, then the charger also keeps rising its voltage. It reaches a certain voltage, 126 volts, at which point and then it changes its strategy. Instead of changing this voltage, now it locks the voltage at 126 volts. It adjusts its current and it will adjust it to whatever level it takes to keep and maintain that 126 volts. So what will end up happening is that it rests for a little bit and then it goes into constant voltage charging. The amperage is, I don't know, somewhere around 15 amps or something and then it will quickly will start lowering because if it doesn't lower then the voltage tends to want to rise but as soon as the voltage rises a little bit then it, it lowers the amperage and then it brings that voltage down and as soon as it starts low uh bringing the voltage up again then it lowers it again and so it will lower gradually lower the amperage on to maintain that 126 volts until it reaches something around five amps and then and then it, it cuts the power and it considers those batteries charged. That's just an algorithm that chargers are used to be able to charge batteries and to be able to, to, to pump as much energy into batteries in the shortest amount of time. But you don't need that. You can just do it with a dumb just a, a regular power supply that is supplying constant voltage and constant current. It will eventually charge your batteries and your batteries will be good. How do I know that? Well, because that's how I'm charging my 12 volt battery on my Samba. My Samba has, it has a group of cells that you can see in this box here. And it's essentially three cells in series and 33 in parallel. So basically 33 groups connected in parallel and then there are three of those groups connected in series. That makes this a an 11.1 .1 volt nominal 12 volt battery. I have one of these guys um, pumping 12.2 volts into this battery. And it's been working like that for over two years now. 
In over two years, I haven't checked if any of the cells have drifted, if their voltage have drifted. So let's do that right now. Let's take it apart. Okay, here is the inside of the battery. As you can see, very professional. This is not duct tape, but it's like packing tape. I only use like grade A materials to make my batteries. All right, let's check. This is a balancing wiring harness that I put on the cells. Here we go. After two years, the voltage was bam. There you are. You see it? Okay, let me read it for you. There's three cell groups, 12.19, right? So it's almost 12.2 volts. That's what my Samba power supplies have been charging this battery to, 12.2 volts. And 12.2 volts, it's slightly lower than 12.6, which is 4.2 per cell. That is just for just a little bit of extra safety. Um, it is not good to have these batteries fully charged all of the time. They actually like to be a little bit less. I don't need 100% of the power on these batteries. So I have a little bit of wiggle room. I can go lower, increase the level of safety. Okay, so in two years, they have drifted, possibly, 82 millivolts. There's, a, there's an 82 millivolt difference between the highest voltage on, on these groups of cells and the lowest. The, the highest group is 4.115. 4 and the lowest group of cells is 4.03. Um, that is not a whole lot. That is nothing to be alarmed. In fact, I'm not even gonna attempt to balance this group of cells. In fact, this might be zero drift, and that's just how I left them when I built the battery. I'm not exactly sure of that. In fact, let's, to be able to test that, let's write down the date. Today is, okay, now we have that here. When we open it a year from now, we'll be able to tell if they drifted, if they further drifted from this, or if they're exactly at the same level. Now let's close it up, put it in the car, take the dogs to the park. Now here's one question that without a doubt is going to pop out in the comments. How, how big is my 12 volt battery? What kind of capacity is it? Well, I don't know. I don't actually remember, but I, we could figure it out here together. Look, let's check it out. There is 99 cells in here. They're not the, I know they're not the grade eight cells that I was gonna use on my Samba. So they're probably like 1.8 amp hours each. So 1.8 amp hours times 3.7 uh, volts nominal, that equals 6.6 .6 watt hours uh, in each cell. So you, all you have to do is multiply that by 99. And you come up with 659.34. So 660.65 kilowatts. It's about half, a little bit over half of a kilowatt. 650 watt hours. Um, in amp hours, it's a 60 amp hour battery. All right, let's go install it in the bus because I have to take my parents somewhere. And then I have to take the dogs to the park because it's Saturday and they complain, so. Let's do this. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave some comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also think about becoming our patron by following the patron link. And don't forget to follow me on social media. All right, guys. See you guys tomorrow.